everybody, my name is Emily Russell um, and I have the pleasure and privilege of doing the marketing and the outreach here at Clearview Regional Medical Center. I see a lot of familiar faces, so I'm glad you guys are back and I see some new faces, so welcome. We're so glad that you've joined us. We do a monthly lunch and learn event just like this every single month. The date kind of varies because I try to structure it around um, our physician schedules when I can actually get them here to speak to you about a particular topic. And the topic usually varies as well. So you'll learn something a little different each time. Um, this time we actually had planned to have Dr. Johnson come and talk to us about bone health. Unfortunately, he had a last minute emergency that called him out of state. So we are blessed with Dr. Julie Allen. And Dr. Allen is brand new to our medical staff. She's like, 15 days on the job so far mm -hmm. here with us. Um, so she came to us from New York, New Jersey, by way of Augusta, Hepzibah. Mm -hmm. She was practicing down below Augusta for a while. And so we are just so blessed to have her as part of our medical staff now. Um, she is part of our primary care network, our employee primary care physicians, and her office is located over on Breedlove Drive, just across from the old hospital. So how many of you guys already have a primary care physician that you identify with. Okay, most but not all. You know, the interesting thing is I find that so many adults, we neglect our health and we neglect to have a primary care physician that actually works as that gatekeeper um, for all of our medical information. Um, so Dr. Allen is a primary care physician. She specializes in family medicine, so pediatrics all the way to geriatrics, and she's currently accepting new patients, if that's something that you might be interested in. Um, so without any further ado, I will just turn it over to you, Dr. Allen. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Oh, you're so sweet. She gave me such an awesome introduction. So, um, I'm happy to be here, and the presentation topic I selected was heart health, pretty much. So. Basically going into what's heart disease and what can we do to prevent it and kind of going into exactly how does heart disease start and what do you expect um, if you might have symptoms of heart disease. So, so the heart is the organ that's responsible for all the blood flow to the rest of your body. So if the heart is unhealthy, vital organs may not work as well, such as the brain, liver, kidney, muscles, etc. It can be very uncomfortable um, for someone to be living with heart disease or to start experiencing the symptoms of it. Um, usually, you know, the patient will present with, you know, symptoms of feeling very tired. A lot of people know of the chest pain, but it, it's more than that. Feeling tired, dizzy, just not really yourself. So over time, if you have worsening heart disease, it can affect the rest of your organs and that's when you have that overwhelming sense of just feeling tired and not yourself and some people even tend to act strange if they're not having enough of that blood pumping effectively to each of your organs or to the rest of your body. Okay, so what is heart disease? Heart disease is the disease of the vessels, the arteries supplying blood to the heart. So the vessels that we're talking about are the arteries. Um, now, when we're talking about this type of vessel disease, the most common form of it is atherosclerosis, okay? So atherosclerosis, has, have you heard of that, what atherosclerosis is, or it's kind of a new term, or it's just kind of been thrown around? How many people have heard of it? Kind of, sort of, okay. <laughs> so basically, atherosclerosis is fatty buildup, uh, referred to as plaques, which are deposited in the arteries. So. Over time, it might just start off as something very small, fatty <laughs> deposits that build up either from having a very unhealthy diet for most of your life um, and also having high cholesterol and even smoking. So these can get larger, 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 and it makes it very difficult for blood to flow to those very important areas of the heart. And you know the heart is a muscle. This is what keeps blood flowing to the rest of your body. So you need enough of that good blood with that good oxygen supply flowing to the heart to make it work more efficiently. So that's a picture of um, atherosclerosis on your, on my left, your right. Um, so on my right, pretty much a normal artery with its three layers, blood just flows freely through it. With atherosclerosis, you see the plaque that's formed, the fatty deposit with calcium 
as I mentioned, stemming from a long history of smoking, um, a long history of unhealthy eating. Um, so as you notice, they can vary as far as like how much of the diameter of the artery it takes up. So if it gets larger and larger, you know, resting when you're just relaxing, sitting, you might feel fine. But once you start making the heart go to work, meaning standing up, going about your daily activities, you might start feeling that stress of that decreased blood flow to your heart. And that's where you have that chest pain or something just doesn't feel right. Okay. So that's a picture of the heart. Um, no need to memorize like the vessels and the structures, but you know there's smaller vessels going to those important areas of the heart. You know the heart is divided into four chambers, the largest, um, the chamber that's responsible for pumping blood to, the, um, to your body, um, the left ventricle, that's the thickest heart muscle and that's a very common area where anyone who has this type of heart disease may suffer damage. Because this heart muscle gets thick over time with a long history of high blood pressure, um, and the fact that you might not have in, enough blood flow or enough oxygen flowing to that area, that can cause those chest pain symptoms or cramping. Essentially, the chest pain is kind of like the cramping that you might feel in your leg if you're not getting enough blood flow. It just hurts a whole lot and it can present in different ways. Okay, so atherosclerosis ultimately compromises blood flow to the heart. So over time, you'll end up with decreased blood supply to those specific areas, um, and someone might struggle with chest pain, feeling tired, fatigue, something just feels strange. Some people end up getting some shoulder pain. I know that um, you know when you think of a heart attack, you think of that chest pain, feeling dizzy, or pain radiating to your shoulder. That has to do with the way the nerves are involved. Um, usually you have this pain kind of radiating to your shoulder or to your jaw. It's referred pain. It has nothing to do with pain, um, you know, injury to that specific area. That's just kind of the way our body works. But someone may be sitting down resting comfortably if they've had a long history of this atherosclerosis or this um, decreased blood flow, they'll start getting pain you know, just out of nowhere. You don't even have to work your heart that much, you know? And, but of course, if you have these chest pains and, and you say, for example, you're seeing a cardiologist already, they've put you on these medicines to help you and that medicine is not helping you at that time, you need to seek treatment immediately just to make sure you're not having a heart attack. Now, heart attack essentially is the death of that heart muscle, a portion of your heart. It could be a small area, it can be a large area depending on how big of a piece of that plaque breaks off and to which vessel it travels to. As you know, the arteries, they branch off into smaller and smaller ones just to supply that area. You never know, that plaque can be large enough which can occlude a large portion of um, your heart pretty much. And that's where you end up in the hospital and you know we try to get as much blood flow to the heart as possible to help it heal and some people suffer with irreversible damage where their heart is just weak because of that heart attack okay so if you're having symptoms of the disease discuss it with your doctor or health care provider <clears throat> what they'll do is they'll assess your symptoms ask you tons of questions, review your history, and they'll determine if it's likely related to heart disease. Um, usually from that point, they'll recommend a test, typically a stress test. They might do an ultrasound of your heart just to kind of see how your heart is pumping. Um, and um, if they find something abnormal with that, they'll usually refer you to a cardiologist. Sometimes they'll go ahead and refer you to a cardiologist so that they can assess and see if this is truly um, cardiac in nature. It could be something else. Chest pain can be from anything, acid reflux, um, you hurt yourself, you fell some, some time, but it's better to be safe than sorry. Always see your doctor about these things. Um, some medicines may be prescribed to help keep vessels open and to help with the heart rate. So there are medicines called beta blockers like metoprolol, carvedilol, that's usually helpful in slowing down your heart rate a little bit so it doesn't have to work that much and so that it can pump efficiently over time. 
Therefore, ultimately, you won't be having like those chest pains associated with like that decreased blood flow. This is typically for those who struggle with heart disease. But of course, those medicines can also be, you know, for people who have heart rate issues or blood pressure problems, not necessarily blockages. Um, and then some people are put on blood thinners. And aspirin is a pretty good medicine good to take it every day just to prevent like those clots from forming or any blockages or worsening of the blockage in your heart. I take my stomach. Is that yeah, medicine it's, for the heart? Too? Yeah, it's medicine for the heart. Ultimately, these medicines that are prescribed, they typically prevent the heart muscle from getting so thick. They also decrease the heart rate over time um, just to help the heart pump more efficiently. Um, also, if you have any, like a history of the atherosclerosis or you've had a heart attack in the past, they found, like research has found that if you decrease the heart rate, you're not going to have um, as much of those symptoms that you used to have and you're not likely going to have a, another heart attack in the future or worsening of your symptoms. So they're pretty good. Okay, so who should be concerned about this? Everyone, all ages should be concerned. but. There are those who should pay close attention. So um, the ones I'm referring to are people who have those risk factors, diabetes, high blood pressure, um, cholesterol problems, anyone that's had a history of smoking, which I'm gonna get into in a second. So hypertension or high blood pressure, those with high blood pressure, the heart muscle gets thick over time with many years of blood pressure problems. It makes it hard to pump effectively, plus there's more demand for oxygen on the heart muscle itself. So just like a bodybuilder is using those muscles all the time, you know, the force uh, or the um, weights that they use help the muscle get thicker. The weight for the heart is basically the blood pressure. It has to pump a good amount of blood against so much resistance from that high blood pressure, it'll get thick over time. And what happens? You need more vessels, you need more oxygen, you know, for that area of the heart so it can pump effectively. Another problem with the heart muscle getting so thick, sometimes it becomes stiff over time where it's not letting out enough blood out of the heart. You need the heart to pump in that nice rhythm. If it's stiff, it just kinda, it's just all bulk and no, you know, no do. <laughs> so. So that's just something to think about with high blood pressure. Um, and then of course there's diabetes. Everybody knows it as like the sugar disease. Um, but we physicians, we look at it as a vascular disease. It will affect your vessels over time. Not the large ves vessels, but the small vessels. That's why we have these eye exams, just to make sure your, your uh, vessels and your retina look fine. Um, also, um, if anyone knows anyone with really bad diabetes, they end up having like really bad wounds on their heels or you know legs, ulcers that are very hard to heal. Though it takes small vessels and a good amount of oxygen to help the healing process. So just imagine what it might be doing to the small vessels in your heart. You're not having enough blood flow to those areas, hard to repair any tissue that might be damaged over time. So we typically consider you know, diabetes to be one of those diseases we need to get under control to make sure that the heart you know, um, is healthy. <clears throat> okay. And then anyone who has a family history of heart issues, anyone who's had a heart attack, um, anyone who has had heart failure, um, you know, that's a red flag for us physicians because then we look into those risk factors, um, which is diabetes, high blood pressure, and high cholesterol. Cholesterol plays a role because, as, as I mentioned earlier, this is directly involved with the development of plaques in your heart or in the, or the vessels of the heart. Um, and then being heavy, um, being obese, that is typically associated with high cholesterol and high blood pressure because you've got to pump enough blood to the rest of your body and if you're larger you need typically a you know, larger oxygen supply. Okay, so what can we do to help our hearts be healthy? So everyone should do this, eat healthy, exercise regularly, reduce stress, drink plenty of water. It sounds easier said than done, but I typically tell my patients, I, I kind of target the problem areas for them and figure out a way that we can incorporate that aspect 
of the healthy lifestyle in their life. So when I say exercise regularly, I'm not expecting you to run a marathon. I assess what you're doing on a daily basis. A lot of people, typically nothing really. <laughs> so, you know, I will suggest maybe dancing around in the house for like four or five minutes. Some people like to dance. There are others that have bad knees. I ask, do you, you know, dance a little bit? You know, are you doing a lot like with your arms? I just come up with some exercise because ultimately the definition of exercise is basically keeping your heart at a certain rate, an elevated rate for a good amount of time. And that over time helps the heart pump more efficiently so that when someone is just sitting at rest, it doesn't take that much effort, meaning a higher heart rate to get blood to the rest of your body. So it does make your heart healthy over time. <laughs> I lay in bed and do mine in the morning and at night before I go to sleep, but uh, just lift my legs and arms and... That, that's fine. That's completely it's fine. It helped me a lot. Yeah, it, it, it gives you more energy, you feel relaxed, you're not tired all the time. Initially you'll be tired once you start exercising, but maybe after a couple of weeks you'll start noticing that you have a little bit more energy and you're working some of those muscles that, you know, needed some working, so. Does it help you sleep too? Yes, it does. Yeah. Exercise does help you sleep. So, okay, so exercise, as I mentioned, it helps make your heart, um, more efficient so that you could pump more blood to your body as a result lowering your blood pressure over time that's why they associate exercise with lower blood pressure so examples start with walking maybe five to ten minutes a day then gradually increase to about 30 minutes uh, join a walking exercise group this will keep you motivated some people find certain exercises boring just challenge yourself start off you know as low as possible maybe three minutes I'll play my favorite song at 10 o'clock and then I'll try again you know with this song at I don't know six just pick a time and and make it an appointment for yourself just like your doctor's appointment I need to do this this time so that I can feel good so I just included a picture of a family the healthiest family in America pretty much <laughs> um, yeah it starts off when you're younger once you teach your kids this stuff hopefully they'll carry on with it and not you know, indulge in those sweets and, you know, staying at home, playing their games and all that stuff. Okay, so eating healthy, definition of that, low fat, low salt, uh, lower carbohydrates, carbohydrates, your bread, sugars. Um, it helps with cholesterol, high blood pressure, and diabetes. So you talk to your doctor about it. So depending on what your health status is, if you have problems with your kidneys or you're on blood thinners or whichever it may be, there's a specific diet that your doctor typically wants to follow. But honestly, this goes for everyone. Yeah. Uh -huh. My uh, kidney doctors prescribe a salt pill to keep my salt up to a certain level. Mm -hmm. How am I to know how much salt and how less of the salt? Because it has certain side effects. <laughs> mm -hmm. But it is doing what it's supposed to, this pill. Okay. And, well, uh, yeah, they're, they're a yeah. select population. I mean, is that Certainly, if he prescribed it, it doesn't affect the heart. It's too much salt, does it? No. Uh, usually, whenever we get to the point where we have to prescribe you, you know, salt or recommend that you add some salt I mean, to your I'm diet. I'm having checks every so often. Okay. <clears throat> there, your body functions well when everything is at an even level. So, if your sodium gets too low, that can be dangerous. <laughs> In the past, it happened to me. Yeah. I don't want it to happen again. Right. You you keep following his his rules on how yeah. much sodium to take. Usually, I think um, dietary recommendations about twenty five hundred milligrams, two grams of salt a day. Um, but they but if you do have high blood pressure, typically we'll recommend a little bit lower. Now your problem is opposite. If you do have any problems with your kidneys, there's there's an issue with. Um, you know, emptying out your electrolytes and keeping the good ones in. So electrolytes meaning like your sodium, your potassium, magnesium, chloride, all that stuff. So they're supposed to be within normal levels. If you have too low of a certain amount, you, your body won't like it. You might act strange. You might feel really tired, out of it. Someone will notice something's a little off about you. And some people 
suffer from muscle cramps typically that's, that's a very crazy. common thing that's so no, fun. no it's not fun I haven't had that issue but if people are coming to me about it then you know I take it seriously so but yeah just listen listen to your doctor about that what is how many vegetables five or more a day mm, that sounds about right about five or more a day maybe four to five it's so difficult to get vegetables in but it's difficult yeah that's yeah. fruit and vegetables yeah. so it's, it's <clears throat> difficult to get vegetables in but about four to five is just fine like <clears throat> serving size they say it on all the nutrition labels too so that's something that you might want to pay attention to okay so talk to your doctor it's okay to ask questions about how medicines work and how it will impact your disease don't think that taking medications are giving you the disease the goal is to stay on top of it so that is so important. Um, when you come to visit your doctor, it's not that we wanna find something wrong with you, it's just that we want you to take control of what might be lingering, that's all. It just means that you're on top of it. You don't let that disease overcome you. You stay on top of the disease, you make sure you're feeling fine and you'll be okay. That's all it means, it's an agreement. The physician and the patient talk, we come to a conclusion of what might be important for you like based on what is most important to you and then we just take it from there and then we congratulate you when you're doing well <laughs> so. all right and then important to know your symptoms again chest pain shortness of breath weight gain uh, breaking into a sweat um, you tell your doctor about these things ask questions so that you can understand the benefit of these medicines I'm Emily Russell, Director of Marketing and Business Development at Clearview Regional Medical Center. Thank you so much for tuning in with us today. As always at Clearview, we are looking for ways to help you and your family make better health decisions and just to become healthier. Um, and something that always happens around this time of the year, New Year's happens, New Year's resolutions, everybody has a resolution for staying fit or eating healthier or losing weight or whatever that might be. So I have a special guest with us today that we're going to talk a little bit about nutrition. This is Ms. Kenna Glick, and she is a registered dietitian and a certified diabetes educator. Um, and recently started with us here at Clearview. We're so excited to have you on the team. Thank you, Emily. I've, I've loved being here so far. I'm looking forward to some of the things that Clearview is going to bring in terms of nutrition and, awesome. and wellness for the community. Absolutely. So in terms of wellness, what kind, do you get an influx of calls this time of year for people wanting to lose weight or to getting, for getting nutrition help? Or do you think that people are asking their physicians about that? Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, I think traditionally this is the time of year where those New Year's resolutions, everybody's thinking about wanting to be healthier, and one of the things people often think about is eating healthier because they've just gone through six or eight weeks of eating a lot more unhealthy due to the holidays. Right, and I would assume with winter time, I know for me, if I'm inside all the time and not outdoors working, then, you know, I just want to eat a pot of chili or, you know, <laughs> have something warm and have good comfort food. So um, so it's important to keep those nutrition guidelines in, in the top of your mind as you're eating through the, after the holidays and into the new year. Um, so as far as nutrition goes, what are kind of the basic guidelines right now for a well-balanced diet? I mean, I know back in the day there was the food pyramid or, you know, what's kind of the newest, latest and greatest thing? Right, so currently the recommendations are really based around what's called MyPlate. Mm -hmm. um, ChoosePlateMyGov is a great website to go to to get more information on that, but it's really taking that old food guide pyramid and putting it more in a plate model so that we really have an easier way of understanding what should my plate look like? What variation of food groups and, and the portions of each of those food groups? Very good. So what, what should our plate look like? That's a great question. The, when you sit down and eat a plate, really you want half of that plate to be fruits and vegetables. Lots of nutrients, but not as many calories as come from some of the traditional things that we tend to overindulge mm -hmm, in. Mm -hmm. The other half of that plate is really divided between starchy grain foods and a lot of times people think those are the culprit for not being very healthy but they are good energy sources the focus this year i think you're going to see a lot is choosing foods that are more whole grain mm -hmm. having mm -hmm. the breads and the rice and the pastas but letting them be 
kind of in their original whole form. Yeah. And then the final fourth of that plate is really your protein sources, mm -hmm. whether those be animal-based, such as meats, or more of a plant-based protein, which I also think you'll see more of a push-up for mm -hmm. this year, beans, nuts, and seeds. Yeah. Because you hear about so many popular diet fads out there, you know, I mean, there's a diet that's going on every time you turn around, whether it's cabbage soup, or grapefruit, or low-carb, or no-carb, you know, all these different kind of diets. And I guess what it really, really boils down to is you've got to figure out what works for you, but you really need to kind of consider these general guidelines that you're talking about, the fruits and the vegetables, and, and really kind of diversifying your plate. Absolutely. It really is a balance of calories in and, and calories out. Um, it is very tempting this time of year to look for that quick fix. I think one of the things I always try and tell my clients is, for most of us, this weight didn't come on quickly, so we can't right. expect for it to come off quickly if we want it to be long-term success. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, you know, as you're looking at different diet fads, you know, I mean, I know if I pull up my Facebook feed, there are tons of people that are starting to exercise right now or starting a new diet or say they're going to eat healthy this year, whatever it may be. You know, I think for me personally, the, the important thing about being consistent is being intentional about what I'm doing, not just doing it just to try it. Um, what do you see that really ends up being a, a successful thing um, or, or what's a successful quality about a particular nutrition plan or diet that, that people can actually use and see results from? Right, great question and, and it, the first important step is to identify why do you want to make that change? Um, if it's really coming from you, you know, not mm -hmm. because someone else is telling you you need mm -hmm. to do it, but identifying why am I motivated to do this, and then picking one goal to start with, one simple change, mm -hmm. and making that change, being consistent about it, feeling successful, and then adding in mm -hmm. a second change, so that you really feel like you're in control of it and that you're having success with it. That's great. So what would be an example of that change? Something like cutting out sodas or something like that? Is yeah. that a good starting point? Absolutely. If you normally drink high calorie sodas and maybe switching over to replacing two of those sodas with two glasses of water. Um, and maybe each week you add one additional glass of water for that soda. Um, another one might be people go, I want to eat less calories. Mm -hmm. Well, something a little more specific might be I'm going to substitute my biscuit at dinner for a serving of vegetables. Very good. So just those small measurable goals that aren't really changing your whole lifestyle inside out um, to start with because a lot of times you can't sustain a change like that. You know, right. it, it can be difficult. Right. I think when you take that one step at a time, it makes it feel attainable and it makes it just feel like part of your new lifestyle mm -hmm. instead of a dramatic change that you just don't feel like you can stick with. That's excellent. That's great advice. Um, for anybody that's out there listening that may be looking at this new year as a new way to get healthy, think about those little changes that you can introduce that would just be a step in the right direction. Um, just like you said, you don't get there overnight. It doesn't happen that quickly, but you have to start in that direction. So taking those smaller steps. Um, so as far as education services on nutrition here at the hospital, Hospital, what all do we offer just for the general population and public? We have a great team of dietitians here that offer nutrition education. Um, we meet with clients on an individual basis to really provide that one-on-one -on -one attention and to help individualize the education to what your needs are, whether that be weight loss or diabetes or lowering your cholesterol through healthier eating. We also offer a diabetes class here as a service to the community. Um, and then we are getting ready to start doing a new program. To really yeah, yeah, a new weight loss program actually, um, a whole metabolic center. So definitely stay tuned to hear more about that. This is kind of our first rollout phase, just getting out there and educating a little bit more about our general nutrition services. Um, so definitely stay tuned to hear more about our exciting plans there. Um, but as far as our general nutrition services go, can anyone just call and make an appointment? Do they need a doctor's order? Kind of how does that work? 
In order to be seen by a dietitian here as an outpatient, you do need your physician to send a referral over to our office. Um, that being said, anyone's welcome to call and get more information and we can walk you through those steps of being able to get that referral sent over to Excellent. us. Excellent. And then the hospital here does a great job of helping you to go through your insurance to, to learn yeah. about what that coverage will be. I was going to say, does insurance generally ever cover nutrition consults? It does, it does. Sometimes it depends on the insurance carrier and sometimes it depends on why you're seeking that nutrition advice but uh, again we've got a group here that is dedicated to doing that and can kind of walk you through what your your particular insurance will cover that's great so it's really kind of twofold you can either go to your primary care physician and if you don't have one give us a call at our physician referral line and we can actually get you hooked up with a primary care physician but talk to your primary care physician about kind of what you're looking for what your goals are what your weight loss goals are um, what you are hoping to do in the new year um, and, and ongoing and then give us a call here at the hospital we're happy to talk with you you about what services we offer and get you started along that track right. as well give you the information that you can then share with your physician and bring back to us um, so if someone is interested in learning more how do they contact you okay our phone number is 678-635-8133 so they can just call right here and that rings to your office yeah. and to the other Which in um, contact a real life that's fantastic that's wonderful so again that number is 678 635-8133. Um, so if we can be of any assistance to you, Kenna and her team, you know, walk you through some goal setting and some good nutrition guidelines um, to find out what is what is real and true out there and not just what you might be reading on social media or on the web or something. Um, find out a, a good plan that works for you and your lifestyle. Um, so thank you so much, Kenna, for being with us today. We truly appreciate it and look forward to see, having you serve the community. We have an upcoming luncheon learn that um, Kenna will be presenting on and actually talking about New Year's nutrition and, right. and coming up with a meal plan that works for you. So if you're interested in, in attending that, that will be on Wednesday, January the 20th from noon until one o'clock here at Clearview. And to register for that, you can call our um, event phone number and that number is 1-877-933-2762 and we can get you signed up. That phone number is also our physician referral line and service line referral line number here at the hospital. So if you have questions about services that are offered here at the hospital, particular physicians that you might be looking for or specialties um, that you need, you can always call that number and, uh, and they can help you 24 hours a day with that. Again, that number is 1-877-933-2762. So we hope to see you at our upcoming lunch and learn and we'll look forward to seeing you in the new year as you make resolutions for a healthier you. Thank you so much for choosing Clearview. Hey I'm Isaac with Reboot Computer Company and we're going to give you the Reboot Tech Tip today. Um, I want to talk a little bit about Wi-Fi networks. Um, you know you can go to Best Buy or Walmart or whatever and get these crazy uh, Wi-Fi routers that look like spiders if you turn them upside down. They got all these antennas and all kind of craziness. Um, you know, those things look cool and, um, you know, they do a lot of cool stuff, but uh, a lot of times when people go and buy those things, they think that that's going to give you better range. So, like, you put it in your house and you're like, oh, yeah, it'll cover my house and the next door neighbors and all this stuff, and um, it's just not the case. Uh, the Wi-Fi signal has a hard time going through walls and you may get through a wall or two um, and then or you know a floor maybe two maybe um, you know but it, that's about the extent of your range that you're gonna get um, so like we have a customer that went out and bought one and uh, just didn't cover his whole house and he was upset and, um, so what you can do if you have a big house or if you have a big business um, you know, there's a couple things you can do. You know, obviously the best answer is to run uh, cable everywhere. That's always quickest. Um, you know, uh, it's just quicker than wireless. It works better. It's more secure. Um, all that stuff. So if you can run cable, you know, that's the best idea, especially for businesses and stuff like that. Um, you know, if you can't run cable um, and you still need to have Wi-Fi all over the place, you can do what's called Wi-Fi extenders or Wi-Fi uh, repeaters. Um, and basically what you do is you install your router and then you install this Wi-Fi extender and um, it hooks up to the, basically to the signal coming from the router um, and then it rebroadcasts it. And so if you have that little box in another room, um, it'll rebroadcast in that room um, and it may cover another couple rooms or you know another floor or something like that 
um, and that'll help you out. Um, but again, the best thing to do is always to run cable. Um, you know, I think most houses though these days don't have places where you can run cable, so Wi-Fi is definitely the answer. Um, but anyway, so don't go out and buy that $300 router. Um, you can get you like a regular one for 60 bucks or whatever, and maybe a repeater for 20 or 30 bucks, um, and that'll help you out. Um, that's it for today. I'm Isaac Rhodes giving you the Reboot Tech Tip. Hello, Walton County. This is Kevin Little with uh, Chairman's Report on Channel 16, Walton Entertainment. Happy New Year. It's January 2016. Uh, we finally went from the 70s and 80s of December to the 20s and 30s of January. So uh, we hope we're going to have a few months of winter here. We've just completed uh, last couple of weeks, we had close to 14 inches of rain in different areas of the county, or actually most of the areas in Walton County had somewhere between 10 to 14 inches of rainwater and uh, a lot of roads uh, were, were pipes were carrying it to the capacity and even some had water across it and a lot of people that have moved in over the last several years realized that, that the, their area in their yard, their low spots caught a lot of water and, and water may even stood and got under your house and so uh, it's one of those situations where you know our pipes were acting like they were supposed to moving the water across and uh, it did did uh, we only lost Hestertown Road which is on the southeast end of the county down between Union Chapel and Ebenezer uh, that that don't really know what caused that pipe to fail but it did and it, it blowed the road out down there uh, South Cross Lane and North Cross Lane up near Bowl Springs uh, and uh, Providence Club, those two roads generally do go under if we have a, a major storm event or rain because they're still dirt roads and one of them runs right along the Appalachie River and the other one is over at the beginning of the Alcove River and so uh, those, those areas there just have never been really upgraded because of it being a dirt road and still, still there. But, um, Hannah, uh, all in all, our road crews done very well to keep the people traveling. We uh, we monitored them 24 hours as we were going into the holidays there, Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, and even uh, around New Year's Eve there, we were still having a good bit of rain here. And so I uh, want to commend our public works crews that uh, worked throughout the night and, and worked and to keep you traveling and keep you going here in the county. Uh, and, that, and as I speak on the rains, I, I anticipate some snow or ice or something like that coming in January or February. And so keep monitoring uh, the local TV, local Facebook sites. We'll be updating you what's going on there if uh, we do have any kind of closings or anything out like that. Because, uh, you know, it's January, February generally here in Georgia, and it, it is probably some of the coldest times that we have. And we, we will. Uh, update you if we have any snow or ice. Uh, going on to the construction scene, I was going to let you know it's after January 1st, the Charlotte Rival Boulevard, they should be starting sometime soon on that extra lane, which will be running westbound on the side of uh, 138 Charlotte Rival, running out into Martin Luther King Boulevard out in front of Tractor Supply, and that'll be moving a lot of traffic on. Going to take about uh, three to three to five months to get that done, depending on how the weather is and how the traffic uh, if they can move the traffic through to be able to work and get that, that going on really well. Um, that, I think that will make a big difference on a lot of the volume moving from the 138 end uh, uh, off, off, off of 78 through that little intersection out there. But as you know, Moe's is opening there, uh, Dunkin' Donuts is opening. I hear there's going to be a firehouse, firehouse subs and even Burger King at the end of the Walmart parking lot. So. You know, there's going to continue to be delays, going to be continue to be a lot of cars in that area right there at 138 and 10 because there's just not enough, not enough area to move your cars. Uh, the city of Monroe and Walton County and Georgia DOT are evaluating to see what other uh, areas we can improve right there to try to move people through, try to signal out, do timing on the signals to try to help you. So just don't get frustrated. It's uh, it's. Uh, just some volumes deal there. I, I come through Loganville on Monday this week and on uh, 78 coming from Snellville I had to set through three traffic signals right in downtown Loganville just to get through. So you know that's one of the things that a lot of people coming we we're gonna have some growing pains and that's some of them but we we are be mindful that we are working on that and looking at what we can do to to make things go forward. 
And uh, on another note, I want to talk a little bit about Hard Lever Creek. Hard Lever Creek Reservoir, as I've showed you pictures of, is on the south end of the county, down uh, right out from Social Circle. That reservoir is, uh, we caught, caught, a, caught a good break on all the rain from the good Lord, and we are somewhere around uh, 700 acres, 750 acres underwater. You know, that's a 1,300 uh, plus acre reservoir, maybe even close to 1,500 time you get all the outer edges there. And so we've got a lot of water in there. Matter of fact, it rose in the last week of December uh, close to six feet. And uh, we're at the point where we can only raise it one foot a week. So we're talking with EPA right now, seeing what we need to do. We are letting the water out uh, as fast as it can go out, but we also are, the boat ramp is under construction down there. So we got a lot of things that we wasn't anticipating this large amount of water. But way back when this, this site was chosen back in the 90s, it was the largest drainage basin for a reservoir that they were looking at. And so uh, this kind of proves it now, you know, everybody was saying that the little creeks, the little streams, that they would never fill up. But I mean, if you hadn't had a chance on Soul Circle Fair Play, make sure you ride down and look at it because uh, it's it's filling up, but we have, we've come a small portion right now. The, the, the rest of the reservoir now is gonna really be volume because there won't be any, it'll be all water. There won't be any valleys and things like that to fill in. So, uh, but it is history in Walton County and you need to go and take a look at it and see what's coming on. We'll have plenty of drinking water for many years to come and it's just gonna be something to have nice here in the county. Uh, that's about all I got for this week. If you have any questions or concerns, give me a call at 770-267-1301. Thank you. Hello, this is Jody Johnson. I'm here with the Recreation Report. I, I do want to announce, uh, uh, give everyone a happy new year. Hope everyone had a great Christmas and uh, look forward to the new year coming up. It's a very exciting time for us as uh, we have our spring sports registration. I know uh, the weather was great in December. It felt like spring and now the, this cold front's come in and it doesn't feel like the spring weather, but it's time to register for your spring sports, which is your baseball, softball, soccer, track and field. So if you uh, want to participate in any of those programs, uh, registration is going on as we speak, but hopefully you can go in, uh, to, the com to the Felker Community Center and they'll still have a spot for you. So um, as soon as you uh, see this on the air, uh, please go by there, give them a call and see if they have a spot for you to sign up because we, we don't want you to miss out on the spring sports this year. And that's ages uh, four through, uh, I believe we'll go to 16 with the baseball. Uh, and then the softball, somewhere around 14, 15 years old is the, is the max age. But we also start at four-year-olds for that. We have a little co-ed league in the four-year-old division that play on Friday nights. And then in the soccer, uh, we have a U6, which is your four and five-year-olds. And that also goes all the way up to the U16-year-old uh, age group. So make sure you get in and sign up. Also, that track program, it, it's a great uh, small program that we run over at the uh, Old Monroe High School track. And they run three days a week, usually Monday, Tuesday, and Thursdays, and they have six or seven track meets. It's a good, uh, good way to introduce yourself to, uh, the, to, to, to running and getting fit, some of the track and, and the field events as well, the softball throw, the long jumps, and that sort of thing. So it's a good introduction to that. It's a good way to stay in shape or to get into shape. There's no, uh, it, as any of our sports are, you don't have to have any prior knowledge of the sports. Uh, we try to, to get you in there, some of our volunteers try to, to uh, be good role models and then somewhat teach you the basics of the game. And that's uh, what, we, what we offer here at the Recreation Department. And the fees are always fairly low. They range from $45 for some of the, the younger stuff all the way up to uh, $75 is the, is the maximum fee that we have for most of our programs. So still very inexpensive for what you get. It's the best uh, recreation in town uh, that you can you know, get for uh, for your athletic program, so it's a great deal. So uh, look forward to seeing you at our registrations and uh, get in there as soon as possible, please. Uh, also want to announce that our football teams, I know we talked about this last time, our, uh, our all-star football teams from Central and South Walton, they played in the GRPA, which is the Georgia Recreation and Parks 
all-star event up in Dalton, Georgia, and I'm happy to announce that our seven and eight-year-olds and our nine and ten-year-olds both won the state championships. And uh, I, I really want to commend these, uh, these young athletes. They went up, and if there has ever been a team that's dominated, these two teams did it. Uh, they won 33 to nothing, I believe 33 to six, uh, uh, together in the state championship game over Valdosta. Uh, they, uh, they, they basically both went 8-0 from the district throughout the state, uh, never had any type of blunder, so they really dominated uh, in the sport. Uh, and the 9 and 10 year old division, I really want to point this out, they're back-to-back -back champions. Uh, they, this group won when they were 8, and they turned around and won again this year at the 9 and 10 year old level. So congratulations to both of those teams. We had a, uh, a championship ring ceremony at uh, the commissioner's meeting. Uh, and uh, all the kids showed up and, and got their respective rings. So we're very proud of them. It was a great way to end our football season to win two state championships. I will say that our 11 and 12s were very close. We almost won all divisions this year. A uh, little uh, issue with uh, th that we thought that they were going to be able to come out victorious, but uh, we're proud of them nonetheless. They, uh, they made it to the semifinals. So congratulations to all our all-star teams, and uh, they all did a great job this year. I um, also want to announce that uh, the community centers, our exercise areas are extremely full right now. I know with the, the New Year's resolutions, everybody wants to use 2016 to, to get into shape uh, and, and to lose a few extra pounds here and there that we might have put on during the uh, holidays. So uh, it's a great time to go out and start exercising. Even with the cold weather, we have the climate controlled place to uh, go at the community centers, the 1 16th mile walking track, all the Nihilus equipment that'll work every part of your body. Uh, it's a, it's a great deal as well. Uh, anyone 60 and over, it's really uh, you know a no-brainer because it, it absolutely is free for you guys. All you have to do is buy a one-time membership card at $20, and uh, you can go as many times as you want. We're open from 6 in the morning until 8 at night, and then on Wednesdays and Saturdays we have a little bit of abbreviated times. Uh, we are closed on Sundays, uh, but it's a great place to go and exercise. If you're under 60 and uh, you want to be able to, to go up, it's still a very affordable for you. It's $2 per week per family. We prorate that. Uh, you know, it's usually $104 for the year. But right now, I think we're back down to around $50 from now until July. So it's, a, it's very affordable, and that's for your family. It's better to go up, you, you and your wife or uh, any of your older kids that uh, want to, want to uh, go and exercise. It's a, it's a great place to go. Uh, at two dollars per week for a family, uh, and you and it's, it is also twenty dollars for the membership cards. But uh, it's a it's a great deal and some it's a very nice equipment, very clean place to work out, very family oriented. Uh, so if you're if you're looking at doing that, uh, you know at least go and give it a visit. Uh, we'll be glad to show you around the community centers at Felker Park. Again, our website has all the information that you need and all the programs that we have that go along with the uh, with our program. So you can do that as well. So until next time, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Joel Burnsett and I'm the Walton County Extension Agent and County Coordinator here in Monroe, Georgia with the University of Georgia and Walton County. First of all, I want to say welcome and Happy New Year uh, 2016. Uh, we here at the Walton County office are excited for a fresh new year and we're looking forward to helping you with um, any of your lawn and garden needs that you may have, questions or concerns. Um, so January is kind of a dead time of year for us. Uh, there's not much going on out in the garden world, lawn world, so um, I only have a few tips for you today, but maybe these will help you out in the, next, the following weeks. Um, first thing I want to talk about is uh, so now we've got we've had some really warm unusually warm temperatures in December and now we've gotten um, really cold here in the first part of January so keep an eye on the weather and if you have any uh, prize plants outside uh, just keep an eye out for, for frost or freeze um, so you can either bring those plants in if you can um, bring those plants in, that'd be a good idea. Move them into your garage or inside your house somewhere. If you're not able to move those plants in, that's a good idea to try to cover them with a thin uh, sheet of some sort. You don't want a, a sheet that's too heavy that can break the plant or bend it permanently, but something that can 
lightly cover that plant and just keep the frost off the plant. Um, that would be a good idea for any plants that you have in your, your yard that you don't want to die from the freeze. Uh, the next thing I have is, so coming up in the following weeks around February, is time to get out and uh, prune your grapevines, so your muscadine and scuppernog vines. Uh, that's the time of year to prune them um, and then also fertilize them. There are, I don't have a one time recommendation for fertilization uh, for the vines. It's depending on uh, the variety and it also depends on the age of your vine. So if you do have a, a scuppernog or a muscadine vine that uh, you want to prune and to fertilize for the coming year, give me a call. Uh, I can either come out and take a look at it or you can describe it to me and then we can give you specific recommendations on how to properly fertilize your vine uh, for the coming year. And the next thing coming up too is um, uh, not in February but around March is time to fertilize any pecan trees that you may have. So if you're a backyard pecan uh, gardener and you have a few pecan trees and, and you want to give them the nutrients they need, March is the time of year to put out fertilizer for them and the same goes with pecan trees as the grapevines. It, it depends on the maturity of your tree and it also depends on the circumference of your tree. Um, dep how, the, how many pounds of fertilizer to put out. So same thing there. If you think that you want to fertilize your pecan trees, give me a call uh, and I will give you the specific recommendation depending on your tree. And as always, uh, now's a great time to get out and to uh, get those soil samples in for a soil test for your garden coming up in the spring because even though it's January, uh, it'll be time to get out in the garden, uh, start working, uh, plowing up the, the garden and getting everything ready for the coming spring. So now's a good time to come in, get your soil sample bags, uh, they're $6.00. They're fairly inexpensive and they will really help you out um, with your garden and, and letting you know how much nitrogen and things like that to put back into the ground. So now's a good time to get that going. Um, and as always, give me a call and I'm always happy to help you. Our number here at the Walton County office is 770-267-1324. And you can call and ask for Joel and I'll be happy to answer any of your questions. Uh, thank you and Happy New Year. Hi, I'm Dr. April Mitchell and I'm one of the veterinarians at the Monroe Vet Clinic. And today I'd like to talk about the importance of having your dog's teeth and cat's teeth checked yearly. Dental disease is a huge problem that we see in both our feline and canine patients and it can be a really painful problem and a lot of people do notice the smell of their pet's breath. They can have really bad halitosis when they have dental disease but oftentimes it's hard to really get a good look at your pet's teeth and so it is very important to have a dental exam performed at least yearly. Um, there can be all kinds of bacteria and particles that can get up under the gum line. When we do dental cleanings here, one of the main things we see, which is kind of disgusting, is hair. They can have hair, their own hair, packed up under the gums that can cause a severe gingivitis and inflammatory response. Left untreated, the gums will continue to deteriorate their integrity and cause pockets, and these pockets can lead to all kinds of infection, actual tooth decay, and root exposure, which root exposure can then lead, lead to you know, loose teeth and tooth abscesses and things like that. So prevention is the, definitely the key, just like in your own teeth, going to the dentist is very important, brushing your teeth every day multiple times is very important. I'm kind of a tooth fanatic, I've never had a cavity and I'm terrified every time that I'm gonna go that I will have one. Um, but in our dogs and cats, it's not always so easy to brush their teeth. Some dogs are very willing to allow that to happen and that's great if you can do that. Cats are not big fans of that. So it's really important to have a veterinarian you know, check those teeth and make sure they're healthy. As cats and dogs age, the risk of dental disease does increase. 
So if you um, have questions or if you would ever like to have a you know, dental exam done, please you know, feel free to contact a veterinarian because they would be glad to set something up with you. Um, February in um, our area is dental month, so we do offer free dental exams um, and a, um, you know, special things towards you know, having a dental cleaning done on your pet. In dogs and cats, you can't just do a professional dental cleaning without them being under anesthesia. So anesthesia is part of that process. So it's, it is really important to have your animals monitored and have their teeth cleaned you know, before you have an emergency tooth abscess because it is really painful. People that have had a toothache before can understand how painful that could be. So imagine you have six teeth in your mouth that are all hurting like that. And dogs and cats oftentimes don't stop, you know, eating. I always have people say, well, they're eating great. Well, they are eating great. They're probably just swallowing the food and not even trying to chew anymore. So please um, take advantage of Dental Month and have your pet examined and let's see what we can do. Thank you. Hey there, thanks for tuning in today. As always, we're gonna show you some of the dogs and cats that are available for adoption here at Walton County Animal Control. You know, we had a really warm December, but it looks like that cold weather's finally in on us and probably gonna stay for a little while. So you need to think about your pets during this cold weather. You know, maybe you have a, a dog that's chained out in the yard, go ahead and start bringing them in the house for the winter. Uh, we do have local ordinances that you cannot tether or chain up your dog uh, during weather advisories. And last year, unfortunately, we had to give out several tickets. Neighbors would see their dogs out during those ice storms, take some photos, and we would come out the next day and issue a ticket. We'd rather not give the tickets, so just do what's right and bring your dog indoors. Uh, if your animals are outside, make sure that you've got warm shelter. Uh, with bedding inside. It's best to use a uh, straw or hay inside. If you put blankets in the dog house, they can get wet and then freeze and it's not really helping the dog out at all. But the best place is just bring the dog inside the house during this cold weather. Don't forget about your pets. Ice buckets will freeze, water bowls will freeze. Uh, so make sure you check out that they have fresh food and water at all times too. Just think about your pet. If it's too cold outside for you, it's probably too cold outside for them. So bring them in the house where it's warm. Maybe you don't have a dog or cat and you wanna add one in 2016, you can come to our shelter and see what we have available. We're gonna show you some of those now, or you can window shop at waltonpets.net. Here we have a Cocker Spaniel, it's a male. He's already neutered. He's believed to be between seven to nine years old. Um, he was picked up in the Loganville area. Just looking for a good home. Uh, we have a male. Um, he is a lab mix, but he is brindle. Um, he's probably about a year or two in. He's already neutered. Um, gets along with other dogs. Very sweet. Um, he does have some hair missing on his back, but we think it's probably either from the diet or possibly allergic to fleas. Uh, he needs a home fast. Uh, this is Cassie. She's a Border Collie mix. She's approximately three years old. Um, she's already spayed. She's a very friendly girl and she would make some, someone a great pet. She just needs someone to love her and give her a good home. Uh, this is King. He's a Chihuahua mix. <laughs> Probably about four years old. He's a really sweet little guy. He's got oh, <laughs> lots of energy as you can tell and he just needs someone to give him a good home. Where do you come alive? A stadium, lecture hall, a music hall, church potluck? This year, you have a new spot, walkgeorgia.org. A free website that provides you with all the resources needed to get your heart rate up and body out in your community. Sign up and receive individual or group fitness tracking, fitness demos by certified trainers, recipes, and a guide to resources in your Georgia County. All in one easy to use site. When you move more, you live more. WalkGeorgia.org
What's the worst that can happen? Converting your VHS, CBHS, 8mm, and mini DV to DVD. Preserve your family's video history for the generations to come. Creative Artists, 1113 West Spring Street, Monroe, 770-267-7368.